chapter 11, John chapter 11, the title of the message this morning is The Weeping Jesus. It is on the most solemn of occasions that we see people weep. Funerals, weddings, baptisms, graduations, and many others. Weeping is most often associated with sorrow and grief. When the heart is overcome with strong emotions, the sorrowful weep, the lonely weep, the depressed weep, the disappointed weep, the reflective weep. Humans weep during a variety of occasions and a variety of humans weep. For whatever the cause, weeping is not a sign of weakness. Neither is weeping a sign of a lack of faith. Sometimes weeping is remorseful, as when a child has accidentally broken some valuable in the house. Sometimes the weeping is for eliciting sympathy, as when a child is caught in disobedience and knows that he's fixing to get a whipping. And soon as something is taken care of and they don't get a whipping, they smile and the tears are gone almost automatically. Isn't it amazing that the desire of a weeping child is satisfied when the tears show disappointment for just a moment? Weeping happens on a variety of occasions and to a variety of individuals. But in our text today, Jesus weeps. In John 11 and verse 33, when Jesus therefore saw her weeping and the Jews also weeping which came with her, he groaned in his spirit and was troubled. And Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, Behold how he loved him. The weeping of Jesus is an evidence of his humanity. For God was in the flesh dwelling among them with the very same emotions and feelings. Before we read John chapter 11, I want us to have a word of prayer. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we have looked at many characteristics of the nature of Jesus, but we've not looked at this one, your weeping. And I pray that this morning that you will take this text and it will touch our hearts. For in this text, your heart was deeply touched. And I pray that our hearts will be deeply touched for the cause of Christ. Thank you for the Lord Jesus who does care and who does weep. Bless these that are here today. Give them a portion of your word that will satisfy the hunger of their soul and the thirst that they have within. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's read John chapter 11. I know it's a long chapter. I don't usually do this, but we must get the story. Now, a certain man was sick, named Lazarus, of Bethany, the town of Mary, and his sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore, her sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Then after that, saith he to his disciples, let us go into Judea again. His disciples say unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again? And Jesus answered, 
Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of the world, of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. These things said he, and after that he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth. But I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Howbeit how Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking of rest and sleep. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, unto his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. What a strange response. Then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. Now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, about 15 furlongs off. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. But I knew that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus saith unto her, thy brother shall rise again. Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She saith unto him, yea, Lord. I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. And when she had so said, she went her way and called Mary, her sister, secretly saying, The Master is come and calleth for thee. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came unto him. Now Jesus was not yet come into the town, but was in that place where Martha met him. The Jews then which were with her in the house and comforted her when they saw Mary that she rose up hastily and went out, followed her saying, she goeth unto the grave to weep there. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet saying unto him, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And said, Where have you laid him? Then said unto him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, Behold how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? Jesus therefore again groaning in himself, Cometh to the grave. It was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. And Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. And Jesus saith unto her, Said I not unto thee that, I, that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me, and I know that thou hearest thee, me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that thou may that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he had thus when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about him with a napkin. Jesus saith unto them, Loose him and let him go. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did, believed on him. Many believed on him. But some of them went their ways to the Pharisees and told them what things Jesus had done. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees of council and said, What do we? For this man doeth many miracles. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him. And the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. And one of them named Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year, saith unto them, Ye know nothing at all, nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people, and that the whole nation should perish not. And this spake he of 
himself, but being high priest, not, and this spake he not of himself, but being a high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation and not for that nation only, but that also he should gather together in one of the children of God that were scattered abroad. Then from that day forth, they took counsel together for to put him to death. Jesus therefore walked no more openly among the Jews, but went thence into a country near to the wilderness, into a city called uh, Ephraim, and there continued with his disciples. And the Jews' Passover was nigh at hand, and many went out of the country up to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. Then sought they for Jesus and spake among themselves as they stood in the temple. What think ye that he will not come to the feast? Now both the chief priests and the Pharisees had given a commandment that if any man knew where he were, he should show it that they might take him. I want you to consider several points about this story. First of all, I want you to know that Jesus weeps because of his compassion. Jesus weeps because of his compassion. He entered into and shared the heart of Mary and Martha. God in the flesh was compassionate. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are all compassionate. Hebrews 4.15 says, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, and yet without sin. We have a priest. We have a mediator, the God-man, who is touched with the feeling of our infirmities, every single one of them. For he has been tempted in every way that we have been tempted but he never sinned. That's the great difference between Jesus and us. But he still wept. In his sentences of our compassion, the high priest, it is his sinfulness as our high priest that gives us great hope. As a compassionate God, he did not have to sin to have compassion. Can I say that again? He did not have to sin to be compassionate. Our Savior does not enter into sin to be compassionate, and you do not have to enter into the sins of others to be compassionate to them. Jesus had no sin and still was compassionate. As a compassionate God, he did not have to sin. One of not the first instance of the compassion in the Bible is when Pharaoh's daughter saw the weeping Moses. Look at that scene for just a minute. Here's the little babe Moses lying in that little basket in the bulrushes, and he's weeping. Why did Moses weep? I suppose he was weeping for his mother. I suppose he might have been weeping for he was hungry. I suppose he might have been weeping because he was afraid of the uh, bustling of the bulrushes. He might have been weeping because of the bouncing of the waves. He might have been weeping because he missed his sister. But whatever the case was, Moses was weeping. But he was heard. Moses was weeping, but he was heard. Our text talks about many people weeping, and Jesus saw and heard their weeping. The Bible says in Psalm 39, 12, Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear unto my cry. Hold not thy peace at my tears, for I am a stranger with thee, and a sojourner as all my fathers were. Moses weeping and crying was heard, and Pharaoh's daughter had compassion. Imagine that. Now this is a scene that we must understand. This was the death sentence of Moses. His birth was a death sentence. And here he is weeping. And Pharaoh's daughter, the very Pharaoh that was going to kill all the Jewish boys, this daughter had compassion on him. That means that she was going to put aside her thoughts and put away that sentence of death that was on this little boy. And she had compassion on him. She took care of the death sentence. 
Compassion spares one from obvious destruction. Compassion spares one from the sentence of death. And Jesus saw Martha and Mary in compassion because of a death sentence that was in their home. Lazarus had suffered the death sentence. And Jesus also knew that in days to come, Martha and Mary would suffer the death sentence for sin as well. And Jesus also was compassionate because not only did he see the death sentence within the family of Mary and Martha and Lazarus, but he saw the death sentence in himself. In a few short days, Jesus himself was going to face this great enemy, death. And he wept. But he also knew, like Pharaoh's daughter, that he would spare those from the death sentence. He's going to spare Lazarus from the death sentence that we've read. And Mary and Martha would be spared from the death sentence. And every believer in Jesus Christ will be spared from the death sentence because Jesus died on the cross and suffered death for us. At Lazarus' death, Jesus had compassion. Jesus wept because of his compassion for all men. Jesus right now has compassion for you. Think about that for just a minute. You say, is Jesus weeping for me? Well, I would assume so. Jesus wept for these believers. Jesus must weep for all believers. He's compassionate. Not only did Jesus weep because of his compassion, but he wept because of his change, his change. Jesus knows that after he pays the penalty of death on the cross of Calvary, that he will rise again. He will be changed. And he also knows that Lazarus and Mary and Martha and other believers will also rise again. They will be changed. And as Jesus talks to Martha, there's a great discussion about the resurrection. Amazing conversation there. Martha believes in the resurrection but she has not yet associated the resurrection with Jesus. You see, one can believe in the resurrection, but not believe in the Jesus of the resurrection. Jesus has said something to Martha that is astounding to her. She believes in the resurrection, but Jesus looks her right in the face and says, I am the resurrection. I'm not sure how that touched her heart. But the faith of Martha is being tested. Is she going to move from just a simple belief in the resurrection that the Pharisees believed in to believing that this one whom she loved and the one that loved her is the resurrection as well? The resurrection. What a faith trial that must have been. She loves Christ. Christ loves her. But she must accept a truth. He is the resurrection. She never thought about that before. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9, that we must believe in the resurrection. It says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And so Martha is going to have to believe in the resurrection through Jesus. You see, the resurrection belief changes one's perspective of life. Jesus knows that he'll rise again. He tells the disciples something. He says, Lazarus is not. He called him one time. He said he was dead so they could understand what he was talking about. But he said, he's asleep. The believer does not die as the unbeliever dies, as we are told in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Some people would say that Jesus wept because of their lack of faith in him as a resurrection. But they did not know that he was the resurrection yet. They had heard him well enough, had not heard him well enough yet to believe that he was the resurrection. Imagine the disciples that Mary and Martha were confronted with this new powerful truth. It's a pivotal truth. It's a necessary truth. It's most important truth. I am the resurrection. They were faced with that. You are faced with it this morning. You say, well, we believe that. We know about the resurrection of Christ. But think about it before the resurrection. Think about what the disciples and Mary and Martha had to face now in their faith. 
Yes, she believed that Jesus could raise Lazarus from the dead. If he, in fact, she believed that he would have healed him if he had been there. If you had been here, Lord, he wouldn't have died. They believed he could be healed, but what about the resurrection? They had seen Jesus or heard of Jesus raising people from the dead, but they had not yet been assured that he would raise Lazarus from the dead. They knew that he could be healed before he died. But after he died, is he going to raise? And then they put a time limit on Jesus. If you had been here. Both of them said that. Jesus wept because they did not know about the resurrection. They did not know that he was the resurrection. And so many times in our life, we go through so many things and we don't know that Jesus is the resurrection. We don't appropriate the resurrected Jesus to our trial, to our problem. They were not appropriating the resurrection of Jesus to their lost loved one. And Jesus wept because of his change. He wept because they did not know of the resurrection. I wonder if Jesus often looks at us in our calamities and as we moan and groan like Mary and Martha were doing. And then Jesus groans in his spirit and says, oh, if they just believe that I'm the resurrection, I can change their problems. I can make things that seemingly are hopeless. I can make them full of hope again. Jesus simply said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? That's the question. Here is the question this morning. Jesus says, I'm the resurrection and the life. Whosoever believeth in me shall never die. He said, do you believe that? Oh, but preacher, we're all going to die. So appointed unto man wants to die, but after this is judgment. Wait a minute, Jesus already said, Lazarus is asleep. We will never die. As a believer, you will never die because Jesus, you said, but preacher, we're going to face death. You're going to face a passing, but you're going to be asleep. You're not going to be dead. You think about that. Jesus wept because of his compassion. Jesus wept because of his change. And Jesus wept because of his companionship. In this thought is the love that Jesus had. I've talked about compassion, but I hadn't talked about love. There's the love of Jesus. Then the Jews said, as they saw Jesus weeping, they said, behold how he loved him. He wept, showing his great love. You don't see too many people weeping today. Used to be our gospel message was associated with some weeping preachers. But you don't see too many weeping today. Jesus evidenced a greater love than any human love by his weeping. He loved Lazarus. One might pessimistically respond, well, if he loved him so much, why did he let him die? Jesus knew they were going to say that. And he said, here's the answer. This, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Can I tell you something? We ought to put that on our tombstone. That's a verse that ought to be on every Christian's tombstone. This sickness is not unto death, but to the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. That statement is not just for Lazarus. That statement is for every single believer. Your passing away one day is to the glory of God and that God might be glorified. I don't think the believers think that way. We're going to get weak. We're going to have physical ailments and eventually we will pass away. But remember this, my sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. My sickness is that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. That is right. Lazarus was raised from the dead, and every saint will be raised from the dead. That are Those that are sleeping in Christ will be raised from the dead every single day and every single moment for this reason. Every saint raised from the dead for this reason, for the glory of God 
and that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Your death, my death, is for that reason. The love of Jesus for Lazarus brings in the element of time. For Mary and Martha both said, Lord, if thou hast been here. In other words, they put time in. They limited Jesus. You didn't come to heal him. The time was too long. You, you just wasted time and didn't come here in time. They put time frame and time limits on the miracles of Jesus. And can I tell you something? Your time on this earth does not limit Jesus. He's still going to be glorified. God's going to be glorified in your life and whatever you say time-wise. You say, well, if it just happened at such and such, your time does not limit the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is not limited by time. He's the master of time. Time cannot control him. And time cannot control his love. Aren't you glad that time cannot control? He loves with an everlasting love. And the Sunday school class ought to know that verse, Jeremiah 31, 3. Everlasting love. His love is unlimited. He loves every single soul. It says in 2 Peter 3, 9, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, we're not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Thank God for the young lady that was saved on Wednesday morning at 9, 13. Pray for Stephanie. Jesus wept because of his companionship and his love. The unlimited love, not limited by time, and in order that he might be our constant companion, he wants to walk with you every single moment. How many of you know that Jesus wants to walk with you every single moment because he loves you? He wants to walk with you when you're on the job. He wants to walk with you when you're asleep. He wants to walk with you when you're watching TV. I wonder if Jesus really walks with us when we're watching TV and doing some other things. But Jesus wants to walk with us when we're taking care of physical hygiene. Jesus wants to walk with us all the time, not just part of the time. No matter what we're doing, Jesus wants our compassion. He loves us that much. Jesus is weeping because of companionship. He wants to be there always. He said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. That means you can't turn Jesus on and off. Somebody say amen. He's always there. And he says, I want your companionship. Jesus weeps because of his compassion. Jesus weeps because of his change. Jesus weeps because of his companionship. And our concluding remarks are about the raising of Lazarus. And you know the story. We've read it already. We could see from this raising of Lazarus, he said, Lazarus, come forth. We can see this as Jesus wept because of his command. Or we could say Jesus wept because of his commission. John, listen, this is the reason for his command. This is what happens. You say, why did he do this? He just raised Lazarus from the dead so that Mary and Martha could be comforted. Well, that's part of it. Did he raise Lazarus from the dead just so he could show his power to many people? Why did he raise Lazarus from the dead? He tells us over and over again in this passage of Scripture, this is why I did it. Here it is. John eleven thirty five. 35. I am glad for your sakes that I was not there. To the intent ye may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. John eleven twenty six. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Believe, believe, believe. John eleven forty two. And I knew that thou hearest me always because of the people which stand by. I said it, talking to God the Father, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. John eleven forty five. Then many of the Jews which came to Jesus had seen the things which Jesus did, believed on him. The reason that Jesus wept was because of his command. He wanted people to believe on him. And he still wants people to believe on him. And he weeps that people might believe on him. I don't know if I've got this right or not. Somebody check it out and let me know. But I think this is probably the last miracle that Jesus did before the cross. I'm not sure. But Jesus knew something that the rest of the crowd didn't know. He knew that when he performed this miracle, 
that those Pharisees and Sadducees were going to do as we read in the passage of Scripture, take counsel to take him and also try him and crucify him. If you can put it this way, Jesus knew that he was writing his pink slip by this miracle. When I do this, that's all. That's it. I'm going to face death myself. Of course, he did die for all of us. Why? Same reason. Believe, 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 believe. Why did he die for the sins of the world? People believe, believe, believe. He wept because of his command. He would die, the sinless one, for all the sins of the world. And he wept. Jesus wept because of his compassion. Jesus wept because of his change. Jesus wept because of his companionship. Jesus wept because of his command. This is the weeping Jesus. I wonder if we can weep as Jesus wept. Can we weep because one day we know that we're going to be like him? Are we going to weep so that we can see others believe? Can we weep over lost souls? Can we weep with Jesus? Jesus does weep. I believe he can weep right now. If he wept then, I wonder what he does now as he looks on our life. He sees us groaning in the flesh and Jesus weeps. Weeps because of compassion. Weeps because of change. Weeps because of companionship. Weeps because of his command. Let's pray.